everybody gets to that point where we have to persevere through something and we can make choices to say, hey, I'm gonna go this direction, stay in the marriage and continue to work on the marriage and grow in our marriage or we can go this direction and leave the marriage or stay in the marriage, but just leave it the way it is. Don't care if it grows or not. Because there was a period of uh, financially related uh, where we ended up homeless as a family mm. and we were living literally in basement floors, um, hotels that friends had given us hotel points to stay in. But we decided to persevere through it as a family um, and that decision has shaped a lot for our entire, each one of us, um, our, our kids and Jackie and I and um, deepened the relationship with the Lord as well because there were times where neither one of us could do anything about the situation that we were in immediately, but we knew the one who could. Would you talk about bare wires? Tell me what bare wires are. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a time like this, it's like when um, stress is happening, things that couples have not dealt with in their past, it's been very easy to just push aside, come to the forefront, and it becomes even bigger than what it, it was originally. And we have this uh, visual that will show up um, on, on the screen with, uh, with the couples we work with that, that, that shows, you know, here's what you guys are doing right now. You're, you're looking to the other person as the problem. And again, this comes out of our own experience, right? When we were having a, tr uh, a, tr a challenging time, we were like, okay, well, I don't know how to help you. You know, you know obviously we're just not compatible, but it wasn't until we stopped looking at each other, taking responsibility. So I, I look at, you know, I look at the, both the man and the woman, I say, okay, you're 100% responsible and you're 100% responsible. And there's so much power in that because if you own how you got here, then you have the power to change it. We need to put a spotlight and the, the awareness on what's good and what's right and move people in that direction. And your mission statement really is, is something that is embedded in those values and those strengths. Um, and it should be, it should be a part of that. It's, it's really, um, once after you get done with the why, this is pretty much the what. And it kind of gives you those left and right limits. Uh, uh, thing that I like to commonly reference it is, is like a bowling alley. Everybody's been to a bowling alley. So you have the gutters, right? And so you have to keep the ball on the alley. And your mission statement starts as a kitty pump or something. Uh, it keeps you, you know, on target, going down the alley on the straight and narrow. Uh, there's a great quote from J.R.R. Tolkien where he says, the burned hand teaches best. After that, advice about fire goes to the heart. And so unfortunately, a lot of what we've learned came because we did it incorrectly early on. And so my goal, my passion is to help other people learn to do it without having to go through the same mistakes, right? So the two foundations are this. The first one is be the adult that you want your children to become. Mm. Right. And that sounds pretty simple, but it's, it is, it, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. So if you want your child to be uh, gracious, if you want your child to be loving, if you want your child to be respectful, if you want your child to be responsible, if you want your child to be kind, you need to model those things, especially toward your ex.